Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Witness Day, we're going to talk about Orange Pi 03. So let's dive deep, it, deep into it. Now Orange Pi uh, 03, basically this puppy, uh, I got the sample unit. No money changed hands, meaning I did not get paid. Uh, that's why the video does not have sponsorship yet. And uh, basically they do not get to control what I say in the video. Basically this is a sample, I have to review it. The end. And uh, what exactly is this puppy? This seems very odd. It's not full Pi, nor it's too small. So what exactly is it? Well, imagine it this way. You have Pi series. Pi series generally have two class of boards. First board is zero board that are generally very low power, made for embedded applications or even portable applications. And then you have Pi series, which is like a full board, single board computer. Now take a line from uh, basically zero and stretch it to Pi main series. You will see a line. Exactly the center of it, this puppy sits half the power basically so how the heck this has the like you know the horsepower and all that basically it uses allwin h618 series of soc basically uh, system on a chip and the system on a chip basically allwin company uh, goes to arm processing arm holdings and then they buy the core which core they have bought they have bought cortex a53 many of the soc you will find this uh, cortex a53 that's what people buy from arm so, and basically how you package it up, the special sauce, that's up to you. But the core is generally ARM's uh, proprietary. So Cortex A53. Now here's the A53 is not a very la latest and greatest core. Uh, then while it's still being used, well, here's the deal. It's a very efficient core, very efficient. And uh, any core is limited by the weakest link. Generally, the weakest link in this sort of embedded ecosystem is the RAM. Many times we are still using DDR2 or DDR3. So this puppy goes to low power DDR4. So it does not drain too much power from your batteries if you are running a low power system or even uh, running it on, let's say, power over Ethernet, you do not have the luxury of going low with the power. Uh, it runs on low power DDR4 that can scale up to four gigabyte. Meaning if you are buying this board, you can still uh, buy a four gigabyte variant. That will allow A53 to do some heavy things. It has uh, Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5.0 directly embedded on the system. Basically, uh, there is a chip uh, SOC of that. Basically, the wireless communication module, it has that. And it does require antennas, this puppy. Now, is that a good thing? Absolutely, in this sort of application. Many times you may think PCB antenna is uh, convenient. Well, it is. Not as long as, like, if you want to enclose it, like actually use it in an outdoor environment, it backfires. So antenna is a good option. You can select what you want to have. And the antenna they give is quite good. So Orange Pi 03, this is what we are talking about. It has all that, uh, you know, GPIO pin, 20 uh, GPIO pin. The other uh, GPIO pins are basically USB. You can just connect and um, use other USBs if you need to. Uh, one USB port is there. Uh, two extra can be get out of there. So what is the unique selling point? Because it just sounds like a Pi. Well, you have to understand, Pi right now is still going through the crunch of a pandemic era. And even though the Pi Foundation is making boatload of Raspberry Pis, people are still buying it as if like it's out of shortage. It's like, bro, it's like just uh, Pi Foundation is expecting by mid 2024 or maybe at the end of 2024, they will reach a point where they're like, okay, the supply chain has reached the equilibrium. As of now, you still would have very hard time finding Pi's. And if you are in that position, where it's like bro raspberry pi is awesome but i can't buy it then what's the point so in that scenario buying something at reasonably price because scalpers will sell you <laughs> raspberry pis but for ludicrous price you want something at reasonable price this puppy is available and it has good documentation there were many companies after seeing the success of raspberry pi did try to make their own socs many many companies but most of them have horrendous documentation or basic translation zero documentation so what does that mean that simply means you have to figure out everything from scratch documentation is the basically the hidden secret of raspberry pi success they spent serious amount of time this company actually surprised everybody who's reviewing this is like oh wait a minute they actually built a documentation it's like a hundreds of page of documentation which i have linked down below and you here you can see this, like it does not have too many USB ports, like you have one USB and another one, it requires a butter board. I have the daughter board, but I was like, you know, too much cumbersome. I thought, what if I apply uh, no machine, but here still, it's a single board computer. It's not just a x86 PC. It's a very tedious thing. They have the instruction exactly how to do what will work, what will not work. Like somebody, like no machine is there. Somebody sat down and designed it, page number 206. 
So it's like somebody sat down and actually designed everything. You want to use the uh, GPIO library, they have examples of it. It's like, this is how you're gonna activate it. This is how you're gonna use it. So documentation actually allows you to use the thing rather than figuring out how to use the thing, you can use the thing and do what else you want need to do. So it's really good. That's That flat out takes this puppy and elevates it against way too many no-name brands. So that's good. Another aspect is that A53, you find the same thing in this puppy also, Raspberry Pi 02. But here it cannot fly. The wings truly do not come off. Here it does. Why? Not only it has four gigabytes, that means you can use modern bloated softwares and uh, it also has higher speed. So you can truly do some high V crunching with the same core. So it's really, really useful. Full gigabit Ethernet, which is genuinely a good thing because again, if you are doing any sort of industrial use, you do not want to rely on Wi-Fi. You want to rely on a thick connection, like a hard wire connection. Having a proper gigabit hard wire connection, it's good. Heck, and they did not even cost, uh, cut money here. It has LEDs. So really good uh, implementation that allows it to be used robust environment where you have way too many Wi-Fi devices. You can still use this reliably. That's good. Onboard Bluetooth and Wi-Fi with external antenna. Now, why is that antenna part a dual-edged sort? Well, consequence, yeah, you, you have to have this dangling thing. Benefit, you can use metal enclosure, meaning if you are using this puppy in anywhere where you want to seal your system, especially with metal, having that dong uh, basically port that allows you to have antenna, that's life-saving. You can just move the antenna outside of the chassis. You can have the chassis completely metal, completely enclosed or even sealed and you, you'll be like, I'm fine. Blue, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of them will, will still work and you will still have your protection from the environment. For many applications, that's like shut up, take money. That's why we have that, uh, you know, Wi-Fi as a removable system. Not everybody uses PCB antenna for this exact reason. Many times you would desire that. So, it is uh, a beneficial thing if you want to use a uh, basically metal enclosure system. So that's a really uh, serious unique selling point for many people where it's like, hey, RAM is a lot and fast. Okay, we good, we go. It has documentation, so you will not spend too much time figuring out how the heck this works rather than like uh, you can spend time to building what you need to do. That's another good. Has onboard high quality Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That's also good. And it's available. That's the biggest thing right now. It's available. So what about the performance? Well, again, I can give you numbers, but numbers do not, there is no context of it unless you are like literally have a bar graph of every other system. So it's a good for Android TV, not for phone. Let that be very clear. Our modern phones are ludicrously powerful. So it will be more than good enough for as an Android TV, even emulations of retro games do not expect it to be a like full fledged high end smartphone. No. No, sir. There is a reason why modern smartphones cost almost $1,000, while this puppy is barely $30. So there is a reason for that. So be mindful of that. And uh, the biggest hurdle is that while on Android, uh, the GPU, the onboard GPU that is in the system on chip works flawlessly, uh, the video playback on the lim uh, basically Linux OS, this puppy is basically Ubuntu, Debian, and all other variants that they have, even they have Arch also, uh, it's limited because the GPU drivers is not completely baked yet. So that's an issue, meaning even playing YouTube itself will be painful. Not because it has low RAM, sim simply because the onboard driver is not doing the decoding. So CPU is doing it. So a lot of CPU headroom is just consumed by the display driver and all that jazz. So that is a limitation. Uh, again, not an issue for Android. You can get much, if you want a video playback device, use Android, don't even think about it. If you want to use Linux, you may have to compile your own drivers. So that is a difficult thing for in performance specs. That's why the desktop use may not be as smooth as you would be expecting. Onboard Wi-Fi is actually good. So this is my test and I have just achieved around 106 Mbps now. Is that good? Well, here's my internet is around 300 Mbps. Uh, for a single band to reach 106, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good speed. And be mindful, upload and download. So actually capable of uh, Wi-Fi devices. And Bluetooth worked out of the box. I have a Bluetooth mouse uh, MX Master 3S and it just worked. That was the biggest shock to me. It's like it's a single board system that I just, uh, there is a button in my mouse, press it, it goes into a second device pairing mode and it just randomly detected it, it just worked. 
just work that means somebody actually tested it that's why i said the documentation means somebody was actually going through it actually developing it and they were like oh this works oh this does not work so i'm very shocked like this was like whoa it just works now i agree raspberry pi will do that but you will be shocked how many others do not so this just worked i'm very happy with that meaning if you have a bluetooth keyboard and mouse you may not even need to have a kvm or figure out how to do no machine so that was really good for any and all iot task you do not have to worry about it for example many times people let's say you uh, take example of water heater industrial one let's say you have a lot of temperatures there. can this read a lot of them yes it has i2c support so you can easily uh, chain up to 128 so let's of course you're not going to put 128 sensor in one water tank so let's say few sensors that are for temperature few sensors for tds few sensors for flow meters and few for level sensors all of them this has more than enough crunching power to read all the data compile all the data and send it over uh, gigabit or wi-fi if you need to or most likely what you will do this will be a receiving hub and you will have ethernet connected to this and this will read all the data from bluetooth and all that like why well many of the motor sensors that are made by brands like abb this transmit data over bluetooth because they have to be very independent so they have uh, bluetooth power, uh, basically transmit data on bluetooth this can be a listening station and this will be connected to your um, uh, basically main network using power over ethernet this does not have it you may have to do some extra kajiving to figuring that part out but it can be there are many systems you can just buy it right now so for iot devices this is like shut up take money and okay not a lot of money so uh, be mindful the ram variants do increase the cost so uh, if you can have a very precise tool that you want to do is in terms of iot you can get this puppy as low as uh, 28 dollars or even 23 dollars very low now be mindful many people are showing way too low prices those were uh, you know sale prices if you can find it in sale prices shut up buy it uh, for sale price this was like whoa for normal price it's still whoa simply because you can't buy other things uh, raspberry pi specifically and for price to performance ratio it's actually good so performance was good i was shocked that bluetooth was actually implemented well enough that it worked uh, wi-fi was actually useful uh, so all of that was good and even linux kernel level goes from uh, 5.4 to 6.1 so actual updated stuff so for whom this is well here's the deal. let this be very clear this is not a desktop replacement do not expect this puppy to be a good desktop replacement. even for uh, let's say someone you know who's not doing something heavy you have to trim down os a lot in order to make it light enough where it can run on these sort of things we it's not that problem of this puppy it has more than enough horsepower problem is our modern stuff basically it's too bloated like you can still use original raspberry pi raspberry pi one uh, but you will find that it, it will chuck along even though os is getting updated even the uh, everything it's just that modern stuff browsers and all that it's so heavy so it's not a basically desktop what if you want a desktop buy this puppy this is from uh, same brand basically orange pi 400 uh, 800 sorry 800 this is basically they took a raspberry pi 400 and then they they're like what is the biggest issue in that weird ports like i genuinely hate raspberry pi that they redesigned a pcb everything is same soc uh, all that uh, bells and whistles same awesome no problem why the heck you have micro hdmi on something that's supposed to be a proper desktop because it's really low cost computer does not mean anything if you have to buy micro hdmi cable not only the cables are expensive they are fragile they break ask anyone who has micro hdmi cable for cameras trust me it, they're, they're fragile so they, they, that's the biggest thing they did they're like hey what if you have full hdmi and again there is enough space so it has much better ports so this is what uh, basically orange pie intends if you want a desktop to buy this this will be much better tool for that use now it's a great low cost single board computer for remote clients basically if you want just a login terminal just a, basically anything that is remote does not require heavy crunching more than good enough android tv be mindful right now you can buy a lot of android tvs that still only has one gigabyte or even 1.5 gigabytes of uh, ram so the fact that you can go here too again some of the latest and greatest uh, android tvs do have two gigabytes of ram so you you can easily use this as a proper and because the gpu is supported you can achieve quite some amazing performance there now what is my aim with this not just like a review point my aim is putting clipper uh, for my 3d printer again i have not done it yet because i'm waiting for my printers main board to be upgraded from 8-bit yeah i know it's a very ancient 8-bit uh, ender 3 board i want to upgrade it from 8-bit to 32-bit 
so it can do silent stepper drivers and i will allow much better interpolation between basically this puppy and 3d printer and that's how basically print farms run they're not relying then they do not have individual going there replacing micro sd sd card and printers that have natively this function they are idiotically expensive so you can still buy under three for very low price upgrade the basically not even upgrade just uh, latest one have 32 bit silent drivers and auto bed leveling just put this on each of them voila you have a very very high end machine for very low price so that's my aim uh, of course that will be covered in part two not just right now but part two uh, so controlling a 3d printer and have a web hosting system for that inventory pc because many times again you have a warehouse you have to have a computer there do you really want to put a second hand computer because again that does cost your electricity bill to go up so having a low power device that's just doing with barcode readers shut up take money uh, shopping kiosks again these things are very niche tools where are very precisely built one thing in those sort of environment this thing is awesome a DVR also you can uh, tune and make that if you need to and again it has a very good Wi-Fi performance and gigabit performance so you can achieve some serious horsepower over the network performance if you need to and it's a very good tool for driver developments because here's the somebody has to do that right now we just buy it and we are complaining but think of it this way there are people whose sole job it is to make sure that drivers are you know built now again the worst thing to do that is having a trying to do that in Raspberry Pi because it's pre-built Every, th every problem that you can think of, it's already sorted. This sort of thing that is young is a very good platform. Right now, you can e even try it on your own. It is an open source system. You can go in and be like, okay, this is how we're going to tune it and fine tune it. So as a development board for your skill set, this is really well built. And why this compared to other things? Documentation. The fact that you do not have to start from scratch and you have more than enough layers to be like, okay, I got this. I can understand what is it. This is the weakness. I can sort it out. A really good tool really good for those sort of people who have to develop their skill set in that arena because again that's a job so for those sort of people this is like shut up take money now are there any oops or limits in this well yes uh, micro hdmi i hate it from bottom of my heart and i hate that raspberry pi made it normal uh is that that this is from same company basically pi <laughs> orange pi itself see how smart they are they have three hdmi but here's the deal all three are full how well they're like what if we made it vertical it's available is like vertical hdmi is not special built system it's available it's a common industrial mass produced thing so they just vertical they could have just gone vertical and there is enough space here they can move things around in the pcb get it done and again they did it it's not i'm asking it's like they did it in their better systems it's just like should have done with this because it is saving money on this, but losing all the money on the expensive cable, not really. Um, and again, for the price that they are targeting, yes, every single dollar matters. So $1 cable versus $3 cable, yeah, that does matter. So, and again, it's also fragile. Not only it's expensive, it's fragile. That's why I hate this part. So I really wish they have taken the Orange Pi 5 Plus, this board design. And you may be like, why the heck it has three? Well, uh, two of them are HDMI output. One of them is HDMI input yeah they went a bit overboard with this puppy but it's a uh, that's the thing that does reduce the cost uh, too much because you have to think about all the other things and uh, i do not like the ram options it's like i get it from a, a developer team who knows what they are doing or even a very good programmer they can easily have a full os level experience on one gigabyte of ram but here's deal they most likely are not buying this sort of thing they are most likely developing their own thing or they may be working in a team so from an end user point of view, just something that you are buying, 1 GB and 1.5 GB in today's day and age, uh, it's uh, painful. Let's be real, it's just painful. And this variant that I got is 1 GB. So talking from experience, it's just painful. So that is an issue. Again, if you know what you're doing, very precise IoT devices go YOLO. It's like very locked in use case scenario, more than enough RAM. But for like just figuring things out, uh, you may be like, two and four so that one gb and 1.5 and again i did do the calculation based on dollars to megabytes yeah two gbs and four gb is the best so yeah that's like there is cost cutting and there's too much cost cutting so i do find two gb and four gb to be awesome but uh, one gb and 1.5 gb to be why and be mindful it does cost issue to them also because they have to develop 
different OS images. So if you go to their download folder and you can see uh, uh, you know which OS you want to install, most time they, you have to filter out which RAM you have. Because again, if you try to run a 4 GB RAM variant into 1 GB, it will not work. So you see that, that, that part is like, you know, too much option, too little gain. And from a cost point of view, 2 GB would have been perfect and 4 GB would have been awesome. Again, it's available, that's the good thing. But from a uh, you know structure point of view, it's like why why spend the time on that one gigabyte and one point five gigabyte? That's an issue. Another that is genuinely weird is like come on, cook the Mali GPU G thirty one for Linux, and that would have sorted all the problems. But these are the things that does bother me. The micro HDMI again, be mindful the price point that they are aiming one dollar expensive cable almost ruins it. So and again the fragility, I hate the fragile part of it. It's freaking fragile. So that is an issue and uh, the fact that it does not have cooked drivers for the uh, you know mali g31 that's an issue and ram variant again that's expensive one user as in like users have to be far more vigilant because they have too many options you have to be pay attention to which one you're clicking in order to buy it uh, and it's these are the things that does bother me now be mindful this is just mark one basically i'm gonna use this as a my printer driver and figure all those things out and then i'm gonna make a part two much more in depth and how it was like after using it in real world use cases this was just mark one so this was my presentation on basically orange pi zero three Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. It will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me your disappointment. Please leave your comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.